Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I want to join my colleagues in commending your leadership of this committee in a very serious way, a bipartisan way, and I think you've uh, really served the Congress and the country well. Uh, I also want to join my colleagues in uh, really recognizing the uh, families here today and uh, your emotion. I've seen uh, wiping away of tears, uh, listening to the testimony. I think everyone here has been moved by what you have gone through. Uh, and I would hope that in addition to tackling China, one thing that this committee could do, uh, perhaps you, Mr. Chairman, is uh, a bipartisan bill for the families uh, of the victims of fentanyl. I mean, this has destroyed communities. It has destroyed neighborhoods. It has created mental health challenges. It has hurt our talent, taking away some of the youngest, most productive members of society. And I would think that this Congress can come together, not just on the China policy, but on doing something for the families who have suffered this incredible loss. And I would hope maybe, uh, Mr. Chairman, you would consider introducing something bipartisan on that. Uh, on China, in, in the bipartisan spirit, I, people know I have almost no agreement with Attorney General Barr, but I will give him credit on uh, one issue, which is in 2019, I think the work uh, that uh, you did, building on also some of the work that the Obama administration did uh, to get an a, a agreement with China uh, on the nar narcotics, the fentanyl, the package fentanyl was significant. And I guess my question, Attorney General Barr, is how did you get that? What were the levers? And what does that mean in terms of the levers we could use to get precursors? Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't give myself credit for that. There was a big buildup to that. There uh, was a lot of uh, you know, diplomatic pressure, I think, China didn't like being held up before the world as uh, the source of, of uh, the fentanyl. And uh, so I think they were willing to take a step. So it was a long period of pressure that created a climate where we were able to get that agreement. But uh, I'm not sure that that agreement has actually borne fruit. I mean, it was an important step to take. It's taken away the initial argument that China would frequently raise, which is, well, you know, these aren't exactly illegal because they've changed this molecule or that molecule. It's taken away that argument. But I still don't see the will in China to enforce the law. So we have to do a lot more. Have you seen any decrease in the exports of fentanyl itself from China? Not, I'm not talking about the precursors, but you know, the work in 2019 was on the fentanyl itself being shipped. Was there any decrease in that? Well, I've been out of office for a while, so maybe Ray Mr. would be Dunn. better. Yeah. So we, we did see a change in methodology of trafficking in, into, directly into the United States. So um, prior to that, uh, fentanyl was being sold uh, on the open net as well as the dark web. Um, uh, in May 2019, as soon as all fentanyl was regulated, we saw a drop in that, um, and they just pivoted to um, still send, sending fentanyl and precursors into the United States, but through um, uh, uh, freight uh, carriers instead. We did see also an increase in the amount um, and the level of trafficking directly into Mexico. I would just say, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, two things. One, I, I appreciate the report. One of the, the recommendations, I think, of getting rid of this de minimis exception up to $800 is important because my understanding is that some of the fentanyl, even the final package, is still coming across into the United States uh, because it comes under $800 and that that is not being monitored. And I think that that is something we should do. And then I think we have to continue to think of what pressures we can pose on China in addition to the recommendations, because the reality is they have 160,000 of these small businesses that are producing fentanyl, and we can indict, we can sanction, but we can't get all 160,000 uh, until we get their cooperation, and so we need to look at what sanctions can actually, uh, or diplomatic pressure can get their cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. 